About a year ago, I did a video of a memorial vessel I had turned for a friend who passed away from cancer. Well, just recently I lost another real good friend to cancer, and his wife asked me if I would do a cremation urn for her. So, how do you say no to that? John was my friend for 45 years, he was always there for me, so I had to do the same for him. And this is what I came up with. Now it's got his name on the front, he was Irish, so there are some Celtic crosses around the outside and on the lid. I'm not going to show you how to do the entire thing. I've done enough segmented work in the past, and there are a lot of other guys with superior work out there on YouTube, so you can check those out if you want to, to see how the whole thing is done. But there are two things I do want to show you on this one. First of all, it's threaded. So I'm going to show you how I went about putting the threads in here. It's a different system from what I usually use. And the second thing is I want to show you another way to put this on the donut chuck and have it centered up better. This is something that just came up recently because Pete Stacy sent me a comment and asked why don't you use a chuck on the bottom with an adapter into the tail stop. So that got me thinking and that's not what I did and I'll show you why. But anyway first let's just take a look at how the threading is done. I have a maple blank here. I'm going to use my skew chisel to turn this down a bit just until it would fit inside this female adapter. And I'm doing this because when I put this into the chuck, I don't want the plastic to break. If I have this inside, it should keep that from happening. Now I just want to bring that back even with this for about three quarters of an inch. And I think that will do. Now I'm going to figure out the depth I need it to go in and part this off so that it will be flush on the outside of this plastic. And I think that'll work just fine. What I want to do now is remove these little pieces and then I'm going to use a parting tool to part this off just here. First thing I'll do is mark this with the parting tool so I know where to do it once this is removed. And then I will use the skew chisel to take these off. I'm going to be turning at 2000 RPM. Just a little bit more to take off. Once I part this off, I'm going to have this piece to use as a test. I'm not quite sure what will glue this to wood properly. I read somewhere that CA glue works. Someone said epoxy does not, so I'll Probably take a couple rings off this to do tests with. Now I do have a threading jig that I could use to thread the inside of the bottom of the urn and do the male part of the top, the lid that's going to be for the urn. But I like to always show more than one way of doing things. People are always saying, why didn't you use this tool instead? Why didn't you use that tool instead? Why didn't you use this other method? Well, it's because I believe that no matter what you want to do in woodworking, there's more than one way to do it. So I like to show options. In this case, I'm going to use some plastic, 
ABS plastic fittings to uh, use for the lids. When these go together, I'm just going to set this inside that recess and glue it in. Now I did a little searching on the internet to find out how to glue ABS to wood. And one of the suggestions was to use acetone to rub around to soften the plastic. First roughing it up with sandpaper and then I should be able to use Tight Bond Original. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the acetone around here to soften it up. I'm going to set it in there and then I'm going to just use these large rubber bands as clamps. So I'll put that on there, bring it up to hold it down, put another one at the opposite angle, and that should hold it down enough. Now I'll come back and show you how it turned out. I put my turning block on a waste block using hot glue. So I'll be able to take a putty knife and quite easily remove this. I made the recess, glued in this cap, and now it fits on here nicely. My next step will be to put this whole thing back on the lathe. The face plate is still on there, and then I will be able to turn this to a contour that I hope will look good on here. That's going to be my next step. I've put the piece for the cap, for the lid, in my four jaw chuck. This plastic part is glued in and I managed to turn it, this part right around to here. I've sanded it, put wipe on poly on. Now I'm going to remove it from the chuck. I'm going to screw this in here and with the steady rest to keep this turning smoothly and true, I'm going to turn this part, sand it, and put finish on that. As I had explained, Pete Stacy suggested that I take a chuck and put it in here to keep it centered. Because when I put this on the donut chuck, it's hard to get the whole thing centered, both the bottom and the top. So that got me thinking, and now let me show you what I came up with. What I realized is that this needs to spin. If I use the chuck, first cutting this off, then put the chuck into that opening, it would not spin because this adapter sits in there solid and does not spin. Putting the chuck on there, again, it would not spin. So what I came up with was putting the cone on my live center and sticking that in on the threaded area of my faceplate. And now when I turn it on, it'll spin just fine. I can put my parting tool in here and then complete the cutting with a saw. Well, that was a fairly quick look at how I put this together. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank Pete again for his suggestion on how to center the donut chuck. I didn't do it exactly like you said, Pete, but it did inspire me, got me to doing some thinking. So thank you very much for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day in your shop now and be safe. Take care and don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye now.